Big day on SDPN. Why? We would like to welcome our newest podcast, New Year, New Podcast. Woo! The Objective Basketball Podcast with S and Gun. Uh, you've obviously already met S. He's done some videos and stuff for the SDPN channel. We've been waiting to find him the perfect co-host, and we have Lauren Gunn is joining us from Austin, Texas, baby. Love that. So it's an international show. They're going to be covering all things, like all the big stories in basketball, two times a week, Mondays and Thursdays, I believe. Do I have that schedule right? Mondays and Thursdays? Yeah. Mondays yeah. And Thursdays. So uh, these guys don't know, so I'm going to go with myself on that one. Uh, we're really excited for them, and we're pumped to be getting into another sport. And I know... Um, I know that uh, obviously it's been a predominantly hockey channel, but we know that you watch other sports because we talk about them and you respond to that. And the great thing about this is this is sort of the beginning of the next sort of crop of some, we've got uh, some other shows on the horizon too that we're very, very excited about. This is just the first. And uh, Bocce ball. Bocce ball. Yeah, that's right. We're going to do a ping pong. Yeah, exactly. We went to the same spot. Table yeah, tennis. I said ping pong. Play, yeah. yeah, actually, we do have uh, another one that we're Fortnite. very excited about yeah. uh, in the next it's, couple months as well. That's Fortnite. So be listening to that and uh, subscribe. Subscribe on Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, Google. They're all up right now. You can go to the feed. You can hit subscribe if you want to give it five stars before you even listen. Like they'd appreciate that. Yeah, and I also. Don't... I don't you think wanna, you can do that, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, no, on, on Spotify, I on think Spotify, you, can. you can't. You can't? No, you, no. you can't on Apple. Believe me, I've tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't. Uh, or if you want to watch it, as always, our podcasts are available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash SDPN. Let's make it happen. Start the show. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! I've got my S- balls. SDP. Oh, we're not doing that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> New Year, no balls. <laughs> um, I got my SDPN holiday mug out just to celebrate the fact that the holidays are over. And to got- celebrate? Steve, celebrate. Did you know that Adam Wilde's the Grinch? Oh, no. So I'm the Grinch? I have yeah. very gradually over the last year or so realized that I married Adam. Uh, because oh. well, that's you married me a long time ago. I We've know been together a solid uh-huh. decade and a half, my friend. When was your Christmas tree out on the curb? <laughs> We're talking oh. about the same thing. <laughs> December twenty sixth. What the hell? Yeah. It's gone. It's it gone. was the our Christmas tree was out on the curb before I was out of bed. It was a, on Boxing Day. It was a week oh and a half. My week and a half till they came even goodness. to pick it up too. You I, guys I heard are like curmudgeons. jingling. No, 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 no. no. I oh, that's had nothing to do with it. That's L and Adam. No, I, my Adam wife <laughs> <laughs> took all the decorations off. Really? And wow. she, she's five feet tall. It's like an ant carrying a leaf. She she lugs the the tree out of the house Hi to the ho, curb. Hi ho! Hi ho! Yeah. <laughs> Except not jovial and green and the Grinch. Um, well, at, at the beginning of the movie, my very Dutch wife uh, does it so as soon Dutch. as Christmas is over. Uh, is like, what's the point of this? I don't know if you know this about the Dutch. I'm learning this about the Dutch. They're very fucking direct. They're very. They don't mince oh, words. And she's like, it's Christmas. Uh, Christmas is done. Time. Let's move on. Yeah, but you obviously on. agreed with it. Well, it was one of those things that, that like, like, as you know, they're on brand for you. I think with with any relationship, you're like, is this the one that I need to plant my flag in the earth over? And it wasn't for me. I didn't I didn't feel passionately one way or the other. Either way, I was taking the tree. It's ridiculous. So, you know, the so holidays extend until the kids go back to school. So that's like, so that today, today. So today, today you can drop in your tree. I took down my tree. Never because it's still up. <laughs> and you know why because it's your damn home yeah because i don't care it's and th- you make the decisions there also my tree's like six foot tall it's not even six foot. it's like three foot tall because i live in a tiny condo and it's mm-hmm. still up in the corner because like it's christmas still it's five foot tall it's so, just what it looks like to just yeah, yeah everything yeah. is three it's feet a regular tall size tree but yeah. it looks small to me but i think christmas season ends when the kitties go back to school which is today so like now is the week you take down your tree, mm-hmm. you throw it on the side of the road. Like this is this yeah. is the week. This is it. Yeah. And then you, and what the kids do is they on their way to and from school, they pick them up and screw with it and they throw it at each other and, <laughs> and they you know just black eyes and and broken you always break just break off a branch and poke your friends on the way home. Slap them with Steve, it. Just yeah, slap them. you would you wouldn't know this because you've never lived in a condo. Adam, I don't know if this ever happened in one of the buildings you lived in, but every year 
they have to send out this giant memo like four times over the holidays and like again today and all week long don't throw Christmas trees down the garbage chute. Oh, I never got one of those. <laughs> Every year, some fucking moron does it, and it it backs up the entire thing for like two days because they got to go call the garbage company, and they got to get in there and push out this damn Christmas tree. It's yeah. crazy. Man, I remember when, okay, so when I was 20. How are we still on this planet? I was living oh. in a low rise in Halifax when I was 20. And I had a girlfriend and she was living with me. And yes, we were very, very much too young to be living together. But, you know, when you move, it, it is what it is. So we moved in together, moved cities and whatever. And so we had a real Christmas tree. And after Christmas, we're sort of like, what do we do with this? And so um, uh, we weren't really like there was a garbage chute. Obviously, we didn't do that. But we were in Clayton Park in Halifax, which is right on the edge of where like the forest begins. You know, unlike... Other cities like Toronto is like it, it's a never ending city because next to Toronto, there's St. Catharines and Welland and Niagara and Clarington on the other side and, and Markham and everything else to the north, or whatever. Yes. Toronto, did, like the, this part of the world just doesn't stop being a city. There's right? little pockets of there's there are trees here. Yes. You know? Rare, though. Rare. In, in other Canadian cities, the city ends and trees begin and they go on forever. Mm -hmm. So we were at the part where the city ends and the tree begins. And so we, we took the tree and we threw it off of our balcony in the middle of the night, thinking that no one would hear us. Oh my God, and you're a chair girl. And it made a huge crash, <laughs> but, but it's four, it was four floors up. It's a low rise. And then high up enough to kill someone. And then I went and walked around and dragged it into the forest. And then the next, and I thought, oh, I'm being real sneaky. And then the next morning there was very clearly a, a, like an indentation where the tree had fallen and a bunch of needles falling off. And, you know, it looked like it had been swept all the way to the forest. Yeah, you <laughs> threw a tree <laughs> essentially out the window. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it like it was just you open the door and there's your balcony. Go. Yeah. And that was Idiot. at 9 a.m. on Christmas morning. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Before Santa it wasn't. could even get there. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't. So, listen, there's a lot. There's a lot to get to. There's a lot that we missed. I'm actually going to be going through some um, some headlines that uh, that we may have missed over the holidays and seeing what your opinions on some of these things are, because some of them are dated now. Oh, but in the moment, much like most headlines, it felt real. What is that? I, I, I found it. I found <laughs> it. So I went to my phone. <laughs> I'll put it no, on the no. screen in a oh, second. No. no, no. This is an image of somebody trying to throw their Christmas tree inside the box. So is this a the plastic Christmas tree? tree? So yeah, it was in the, they put it back in the box and they tried to stuff it all down the garbage Wait, tree. Wait, an artificial tree? I yeah. thought it was a real tree. Yeah, no, this this time, this this one of the times when I have this is, this image is from when somebody tried to put the tree back in the box that and then stuff it down the tree. Okay, do you have any stupid people out there? <laughs> okay, so when that, when they have to send out those notes, and by the way, I've never had one about Christmas trees, but I always wonder, like I lived in a condo that was like, I don't know, 30, 40 stories. When you get clogged on the 17th floor, how do like how does anybody get that? Like, is there a pole that they ram down there? They're like, okay, I hope this goes down. Like, I, what? No I don't know. How do you unclog that? I don't I know. I have no idea. The people who do like construction work and like those kinds of maintenance stuff, like so out of my realm. Yeah, they like, they know so much. And I know so little. Yeah. I the CN Tower has never ever gotten old to me. Every time I look at it, I go, how? That's it. Wow. What is the CN Tower, Steve? The CN Tower is the Seattle Space Needle, but way better. What's its in purpose? In Toronto. It's, I think it's a TV transmitter. It's a radio transmitter. Radio transmitter. Right. Even worse. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, don't. I, I, don't, I don't mind. Um, I put the uh, picture of the Christmas tree box really funny, on actually. the screen for everybody. Kind of crazy. <laughs> Idiots. You've never lived in a condo, have you? Uh, no. Wow. No. Yeah, because you went from your parents' house and you bought the house in Ajax. No, in Oshawa. In Oshawa, and excuse me. Now I'm in Ajax. And now you're in, now you're in the Jacks. The Jacks. Wow. I'm the mayor of a new town. Absolutely. Yeah. Have they embraced you? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Do like I'm, any of that? Any of that? Anybody I am notice you? Very much a dad. Uh, I, I know, like, Ajax is perfect for you. I, and I love I love supporting a local business. I love it. There's a brewery down the street and i have supported them let me tell you mm -hmm. go in there buy the beer operation zillion beers is in effect adam he's got a beer fridge in his basement and and 
he was FaceTiming Natalie and I during uh-huh. the, remember the, the watch a game with Steve Dangle that he didn't end up doing? Because yeah. I broke my face. He, he yeah. just faced, he just FaceTimed us and talked for an hour, I think. Yeah, yeah. Leo only kicked me in the nose twice this holiday season. Oh, that's good. Yeah, oh, that was good. Good. I feel good about that. Mm-hmm. Um, one New Year's gift for you is that our good friends at Sports Interaction have their app ready to go. Oh, so you can download that. And, and I wanted to, so you can just down, just search Sports Interaction in the App Store on Google Play. I wanted to ask you, Steve, because you've been Toonie Steving it all, all holidays. Oh, yeah. Explain what that is. Uh, well, okay. So I'm not a very experienced better so yeah. i need a way to do this uh where it is fun but mm-hmm. also <laughs> responsible because i don't want to uh like bet i don't know 50 bucks on a game and then lose and then be like well this friggin sucks i <laughs> yeah. don't want to do this anymore and but the also- whole point about responsible gambling is setting a an, a limit well and also like it's not my career Right. To, like, <laughs> You're just having fun with it. <laughs> I'm just trying to have fun with it. So my my rule, no matter how sure or unsure I am of a bet, two bucks. Now you can't negate that by betting on two hundred things <laughs> in one night. I had a four hundred dollar night, baby, but they were all two dollar <laughs> yeah. bets. I, I did. A, I had one day where I bet on I uh, like over a dozen things because I was betting on like the season long things, like who's going to win MVP and coach and whatever. But mm. most nights, I don't know, two or three. Mm. Six bucks. Did you bet on Jared McCann to score against the Leafs? Because I saw a bunch of uh, oh. listeners tweeting us going, thanks for the free money, guys. Appreciate that. See, I don't want to bet the former friends props. the Leafs. And the few times I have bet on former friends, uh, they haven't scored, which might be the two or three times the Leafs haven't allowed a goal from a former player. I, I got uh, Kirill Kaprizov to score the other day. Though. Jesse, would you bet against the Leafs? All the time. Do you? You're yeah, no, if, if there's a good line, I'll take it. I won like <laughs> seventy. I won seventy five cents on the Leafs beating the Flyers last night. Uh, I, I bet on just, them to beat. I like. Jesse does they not beat on Saturday. Up. I they like beat them. betting uh, right. the Leafs when they're down, so I can win regardless of whether or not they win the game. I very often bet against the Oilers when the Oilers are leading. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's Dude. actually yeah. last night, man. Dude, the, the oh. they were oh, losing. Was that Saturday night? I think they were down. What whatever that game to St. Louis was a few weeks ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, eh, they might blow it, and then they did, and I won like six bucks. It was great. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Some I like the least when they're like, uh, like plus one and a half goals, you know, because they're down by two goals or something, and then I can win even if they lose by one. I haven't dipped but, my toe that far yet. Yeah, they don't have a lot of comeback. This it, like that hasn't that I did that a lot last year, but this year hasn't really been the case because they haven't been trailing. Right. A whole bunch. So I there know. hasn't been many opportunities to bet the least like that. So we've got uh, props for you right now uh, at under Dangles Doozies. <laughs> yeah. We actually come up with these, which is kind of cool. Like we get to customize the bets. And the whole thing is we sort of uh, want to create like the best and most fun bets for hockey anywhere. So you can't get them better than Sports Interaction. So you can download the app. Check it out under Dangles Doozies. And of course, you got to take the William Nylander. Is he's going to score the most goals on the Leafs this year? Jesse still has that one and feels very confident about it. Right, Jesse? Yeah, I want to see where they're sitting right now. I don't remember if I took that. I think I took him to score 50. Willie? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Not great. <laughs> That's why you only bet two bucks. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not very good at this. So. Oh man, that's funny. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um. Okay. So yeah, Willie's up two goals on Austin. Same amount of games played. They put full season forty-one, twenty-two to twenty. I think Willie holds on. Austin caught up though when he scored he the, the yeah, sixth goal last night. We were like, "Oh, damn!" Mm. Yeah, I was because I, I hope Willie scores every goal for the Leafs. So uh, he didn't catch up, Steve. He's still two down. When okay, so Austin and Willie have a two-on-one. Yeah, Willie's the puck holder. Austin better pass it back when Willie. Yeah, that's right. Goal. What do you scream at the TV? Don't you dare! <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not, Willie. He did it. <laughs> Thanks. Austin, Thanks. Austin has to know you got to make that that third pass. Go one or the uh, the second pass, I guess. Mm-hmm. Once Willie gets the puck, it's got to go back to Willie. You, so last we, we've all played NHL. It. 
Yeah, yeah you're right. We yeah. all played shell. Cross, cross crease, tic tac toe, <laughs> yeah. goal every time. Jeez. Until about 2017. And then they were like, no, we're not going to do that anymore. It's back. Oh, it's Is back. it back? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I remember works. when that game came out, I was like, what the f like the only way I know how to score because I never bothered to learn any of the deeks. Oh. So I, I was like, what the f I can't score anymore. You know what's killing me as a defenseman is now when you poke check, whoops, when you poke check, mm -hmm. you slow down. Mm -hmm. Oh, which so makes sense. You got to do it really strategically. Oh, see, yeah. I was poke checking at a penalty, so I stopped doing it. Oh, just in general. Oh, so you're Mike Stevens then. Is that what he Mike does? He presses the penalty button, which is stick -less. <laughs> Wow. No one... Stick lift doesn't work. Yeah, stick lift if you're trying to show off. Yeah, yeah. and it just does not work. No. He goes and he but, gets angry and then goes and turns on the Batman but, again for and the 40th time. I think the most angering thing about Mike Stevens when he takes that penalty mm. is his utter disbelief that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, what? <laughs> what do you mean? No, how? The what? same way okay. as last time, Mike. Stop doing it. Okay, okay, okay. Power rank this. The top three worst, like, like stupidest penalties you can take when you're playing chell. Like the ones that like okay. you're, will drive your teammates crazy. Uh, the stick lift penalty or the 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 yeah, the the That's penalty button. Yeah. yeah, it's the penalty button. The stick lift. In what order, though? That's, that's number one. one. That's yeah. number one. Because that okay. button one. serves no purpose for you, like, getting the puck. There's like, no it, it doesn't yeah. help. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it's awful. Number two is probably the charge, mm -hmm. um, because uh, it's easily avoidable. Sometimes it's accidental. It's, uh, it's avoidable, but the odds of you laying the hit and not being out of position... <laughs> Oh yeah! On a charge, because you gotta be you gotta be pressing like the speed button, right? You gotta be you gotta be going a, a fair speed, fair distance, coming from center ice to yeah. hit a guy against the board. Yeah, and then I'm pretty good at not tripping. I would say for me, I get frustrated when I take an interference because it's very often I just hit the wrong guy by accident. <laughs> I got one. Uh, when somebody presses L1 and R1 at the same time and you do the dive across. Never and then, mind, I do take that penalty. <laughs> Superman? And then yeah. the, the player with the puck just goes over them, you get a tripping penalty. Yeah. You know, that, oh. you, that you're, you can't be doing that. Like, play, Is that what happens? The, yeah, so yeah. they'll just run, they'll just fall over you and there's a penalty on you. There are ways to not take the penalty when you do it. It's right. just really hard. Yeah, so <laughs> stop hitting R1, L1, Steve. So I'd, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'd, I'd, so I, I'd say, <laughs> you do it, don't I, you? I, I do, I do. That's, I, I try to do crouch block more yeah. now, but it's yeah, not you got to do oh, the one, one knee one. Yeah, but it's now it's, it's, that's even worse than the poke check because when you do crouch block, while you're going backwards, you don't slide anymore. You just stop dead, basically. <laughs> you, you, you kneel down on the ice? Yeah, That's well, it? if I'm trying to cut off the two-on-one, which I am often, thanks, Ian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I love about Steve, nothing has ever changed. Jesse, when we played with him, Steve always was the same way, which oh, yeah. was, how come you're not doing exactly what I want you to be doing yeah! right now without me communicating? How that? come? <laughs> anyway, continue. Um... <laughs> We have a recipe. It doesn't work, and we stick to it. That's right. <laughs> and uh, no, yeah. So when you when you do the crouch block, you basically stop dead, and then they're able to. You don't cut off the pass or the shooter, <laughs> and they which is going. great for the goalie. <laughs> and, except it's not, and then they score. And you're is Dangle Navy? Upset. Are you guys good again? Now that you had some time over the holiday to play a little, mm, I think we're pretty good. Yo, yeah. Myrtle is a sick goalie. Okay, he's the, I I we've talked about this before, but I call him the paywall. Yeah. And he's, oh, man. He, he likes to put together the worst set of goalie equipment he can find. <laughs> like, just very visually upsetting. <laughs> and he just puts up solid performances. Mm -hmm. you, you won a couple games, yeah? Yeah, won some games. What, what div? What division? Uh, I think we dropped to two. You were div one? Oh, we were. That's impressive, man. Those, those are hard games. Well, really impressive. Listen, it depends on who's playing. Okay. There are nights where we should probably be in Div 5. <laughs> there are nights where we could probably... What's, what's, the, okay. what's Div that lineup? What's the ultimate lineup? Yeah. Do, no, you have to be honest. Yeah. Who, well, who are you skating? Who are you benching for the, 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 the lineup, Div 1? The lineup where we have the most fun. You know? What's Steve. that lineup? 
We're going to break uh, up Dangle Navy yeah, right no, now. Absolutely, yeah, not. No. <laughs> absolutely not. You know what I'd like to do is I'd like to do an anonymous survey of all the other members of the uh, Dangle Navy group and and talk about Steve's biggest faults and stuff. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to reach sure. out to them, start a group chat and be like, okay, guys. I throw stupid hits. Yeah. I don't, there are some nights where I'm just like, oh, but it's fun. And then I try to throw a stupid <laughs> hit. And then it's a two on one that Ian has to take care of. Have you guys ever like because I know certain teams are super intense. Have you ever gotten to the point where you guys are sort of mad at each other oh, and you have to time. just be quiet? Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, we have. There's one member of our team, Nick, who will just Nick just La, La Flame. No, no, uh, Nick La Flame. Oh, yeah. La Flame. Okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. Nick Cash. Yeah, and he will just turn off his mic. Mm -hmm. No way. That's a that's an mic. adult thing. That's the right move. And the youngest member of our team. Yeah, I met him. He's very nice. Oh, you don't want the silent treatment from Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like the silent no. treatment from Jesse. You know you're in trouble. Mm. When Jesse isn't saying it. something, it's it's isn't it the worst for us? Oh. Torture. It's terrible. He's not mad. He's disappointed. Yeah. yeah. No, and me not saying something is the first two years of the podcast because you know, I couldn't well, get picked up and I was just so upset. Often on those episodes that we were disappointing anyway. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I understand that. You know, I just, just resentment. <laughs> just building I resentment. I have to walk from the ghost station and Steve gets his, <coughs> Steve gets his chauffeur, you know. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. I had a two seater car yep. and I didn't know Jesse was coming from the go train and I would pick up Steve at the go train, but not Jesse. Yep. Jesse did nope. the very adult thing of, um, Solving the problem by doing nothing. <laughs> I handled my business. I knew whose name was on the show and who needed their, oh, you their carriage ride you to Adam's <laughs> apartment. Yeah. I, okay, listen. You had to walk 20 minutes uh, in the winter for many months, but I got you a CEO mug. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all better now. Hey, so I have a, I have a question. I have a question. Um, if you're in a position to get the first overall pick mm. okay mm. this is big which montreal has never had never had thank god we we solved that riddle can i tell you the hardest part of these holidays <laughs> yeah all the times we were wrong on the holiday episodes and not being able to say anything about it i know <laughs> yeah our picks uh Sofkowski, you fucking moron <laughs> we were there. merry christmas i'm it's sorry it's hard to make picks like three weeks in advance and like the caps going on a fucking heater like 18 oh, and one yeah. over the course of me saying that they're gonna tank the sabers too <laughs> the same the sabers that was adam right was that me oh what i, I don't know one of you said the sabers were bad and they decided to probably adam just destroy hates, the world adam well hates the sabers then this is this is the fun of the holiday episodes is <laughs> whatever um but i i uh uh i'm just i'm specifically pointing to a, a story in football yesterday uh the chicago bears and the houston texans both had a shot at uh the number one overall pick the all the houston texans had to do was lose and the houston That's texans it. are awful like really bad and i i have a question though before i get into the fully explain this story because the houston texans were by the way finished the season 313 and one so they were Ooh, bad. One. they got That's a tie mm -hmm. um let me ask you this mm. as a general manager do you believe that you could, and this goes for any sport, do you believe that you could go to your head coach and say, please lose? I'm fairly certain you're literally not allowed to do that, like legally. Oh, actually? Well, yeah, you can't throw a game. Could you say, don't win? You could say, play this guy. Mm -hmm. Play that guy. Try this strategy. Um, try the strategy where you just let everyone blow by you or whatever, but you cannot expressly say, lose that is called match fixing. <laughs> okay. Oh, fair. <laughs> I see. I see. Um, see, the Bears, I told you that the Texans record was 313 and 1. Yes. The Bears record, 3 and 14. Mm -hmm. Oh, heavens. So had they not tied a game, they would have been tied for that and it would have been a, like a points differential thing. But what happened yesterday was the Texans went in with two wins. And all they had to do was not lose the game. But right. Right at the end. It was fourth and 20. Fourth and 20. Oh! Jesse, explain. Explain. So it was fourth and 20 for the Houston Tex Texans. And they said, fuck it. We're throwing a bomb. We're trying to win this game. We're trying to, we're trying to get this third win of the year. And they completed this improbable throw. From, not even like just to get the first down. They 
scored a touchdown on that fourth and 20 play. This was their Boyd Devereaux hat trick. Yeah, yeah it went okay. through the arms of the defender right <laughs> into the hands of the Houston Texans wide receiver. From the and Colts, who are also bad. It was, it was insane. Yeah, and as an organization, especially in National Football League, where there's no lottery, like you come in last, right. you get the first overall, overall pick. The draft, like capital from one to two is so important. You need that one pick. It's, it's probably going to be a quarterback named uh, Bryce Young. He plays in the NCAA right now. And then the Bears are probably going to trade that pick because they already have a, a quarterback, so they don't need it. But they're going to get a haul. Like, they're going to get so much here. And, and Houston, they could have taken that quarterback or traded that away. Um, and it's, as an organization, you need to put your players in a position where you have to try and lose the game. Yeah, you have to put the guys on the field who are just worse than the guys you have. You can't chance it in a way where, hey, we're playing all our starters. We're going for this. No, play every single backup. Make sure your head coach like Lovey Smith, he got fired today. He's mm-hmm. going out there trying to win the game, obviously, because he has nothing to lose. But like if I, if I'm the GM for in situations like this is fourth and 20. Maybe you just run like a little slant. That's kind of a two yards short of the line to gain. Like, maybe you don't get that first down. If you're the GM, you stay up all night like the Grinch and go into the locker room and just cover everything in, like, honey and maple syrup and sticky shit and just, I don't mm-hmm. know. <laughs> but you're not allowed to you can't make you, them lose. Yeah, you can't make them lose, but you got to put the team in a position to lose. You already had an <laughs> awful season. You you have two wins on the year. There's no point in winning this game. You're only hurting yourself by winning. And it's awful. They and won. They, they fired the coach anyway. They won thirty-two to thirty-one. Oh! And so, just to give you an oh idea of what God. Jesse's talking about here, um, the LA Rams, and we talked about this on the podcast back in the day in 2016. They traded up from the 15th overall pick to the first overall pick to get Jared Goff back in the day, and it did get them to the Super Bowl, right? Not, uh, yeah, with Goff, with once. Goff, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, they traded Goff for uh, Stafford. One of the picks now, the uh, Lions have the Rams pick, and they're going to be picking like the top five because oh, the Rams amazing. suck this year. But they got a Super Bowl. So, um, uh, here's what the trade looked like to trade a first mm-hmm. overall pick. Uh, the Rams uh, obviously got the first overall pick. They traded their first pick, their second pick. Sorry, two second picks that draft. Okay. Okay. Then 2017's first pick and that third pick. And then the Rams also received 20, two 2016 picks, but they were like low round. That's like a WHL trade. It's a, like a WHL yeah. trade. And that is why I bring this up. Ah. Okay. Because you tweeted this yesterday. And my question to you is, after watching the World Juniors. Oh, I know. Why win? If you, why win? If you have a realistic shot at the playoffs, fine. If you have less than 40 points at the time we are speaking, and I picked that number for a very specific reason. Okay. Do not try to win games. That's 10 teams, by the way. If you want to include the Panthers. I do not. Is, you don't. So that's and this 11. is the thing. They don't have their first pick. Oh. Mm-hmm. Montreal has it, and it's not top 10 protected. Oh, that was Sherratt, wasn't it? No. It's Giroux. fucking Ben Sherratt. Oh, was oh, it? <laughs> was the Sherratt trade? Oh, well, which is looking worse and Ben <laughs> Sherratt might get the Montreal Canadiens Connor Bedard. Damn. Oh. And Florida, the Panthers. Let me just say, as a team who has to play in your division, but also in Montreal's division, what the fuck, man? They need to <laughs> straight up. So they have 40 points. Yeah. There's, there's a reason I picked that. They have a bunch of teams above them. Buffalo is one of them. They're mm-hmm. not in a playoff spot, but they're hot as a pistol. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what's interesting about Buffalo is their goal differential. And that really counts. They're a plus 22 where everybody else around them is like a minus seven, minus eight. Uh, Buffalo is the real deal. Like they're, they're doing great. They're good. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're good. They're straight up good. Um, and then there's the Kings who are top 10 like they've been all season and a negative like they've been all season. It I know. Make any well, sense. they know what's scoring goals, right? I don't know. I don't get it. Um, you can't miss this guy. Florida might have to do what the Leafs did when they accidentally traded away Scott Niedermeyer in exchange for Tom Curvers, oh. um, which is a similar situation. You spend a first round pick over a year ahead of time. Mm-hmm. You don't realize you're going to be shit. Mm-hmm. Then you're shit. Florida, 
like people I, I, I've seen were talking about Florida trading off assets. You dumbasses, buy, buy. <laughs> Do you want a team in your division to get Connor friggin' Bedard? They might get him anyway. They might get him anyway with their own pick. Yep. Yep. You idiots. What's the the lottery <laughs> odds to get one overall? You got to be top twenty percent. Twenty percent. No, but the bo- there's a cutoff in the bottom. You got to be in. Isn't it like it's win- no? If you if you don't make the playoffs. It, everybody has everybody's in everyone who oh, wow. make the playoffs but the percentages are very low for literally everyone it, right right i don't think it'd be 20 anymore because there's a different amount of teams but it's uh it's like 18 percent. yeah there, there's ways the people have been posting the it, it, the most terrifying thing i saw over the holiday is um when people do the draft simulator and montreal gets one and two they easily could you you can go bedard Fantilli, Bedard, Mitchkov, Bedard. As long as it starts with Bedard, it's going to be a big well, problem. So he had 23 points in seven games. Stupid. Like, why would you, like, honestly, why would you try to win? Trade everything you have. Do you see his, his return to the WHL last night? Yeah. He, what did he have? Another three assists or something? No. He had six points. Four of them were goals. 13 shots. So Two I, of the goals apparently were shorthanded. So I was, I was right on the, the, Number one pick that you need to be at least in the bottom 10 because you can only jump 10 spots. Oh, you, you need to be in the bottom 11 because you can only jump up 10 spots mm-hmm. in the draft lottery. Oh, yeah. So if, if you're a bottom 12, you can't get the one overall pick because you can only jump new? up 10 spots. I don't remember that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, um, I, I, uh, I, I just think after that performance, there's no realistic reason why any team south of Florida, literally in the standings, should win. If you don't have 40 points, s- stop. And that those, stop. those teams as of right now include the Detroit Red Wings, Ottawa Senators, Vancouver Canucks, Philadelphia Flyers, Montreal Canadiens, San Jose Sharks, Arizona Coyotes, Anaheim Ducks, Columbus Blue Jackets, and Chicago Blackhawks. Now, Not one of those teams even has the illusion of being good. So let me ask you about... All of those teams. Of Detroit, the teams, I'm a bit surprised. Of the teams I named, you know Detroit's going to be good. They're just not there yet. Of the teams I named, what team is going to screw this up? Yeah. What team's going to go on a heater? Uh, of the... Of, of the of the bottom bottom 10. From 23 to 32 in the standings. Absolutely none of them. Nashville's a good team. Nashville is a decent team with good goaltenders. Nashville's above Florida. Oh. I'm, yeah, I'm going south of Florida here. Yeah, oh, south of Florida. What, what sucks about the Panthers is it's they're, the bottom, one, know, they're one point 11. up on Detroit <laughs> uh, and one point up in the Sens. Florida's played 41 games. Sens have played 39. Detroit's played 38. So oh. by points percentage, Florida's below both of them. They're fucked. I don't understand. Florida did some weird stuff this offseason. Like, why you got rid of your head coach who did amazing things for you and traded. Huberto and he was great for you and Huberto and Uyghur yeah to bring in Kachuk who's Kachuk, great which is a it's a forward facing move like you're thinking about the future but but the the Panthers will win now you don't have your first you will win now dummy you don't have your first what are you doing ah he just had the highest I like I know Huberto has struggled like I'm not saying it's uh, Kachuk's fault like you got you, you cannot reasonably expect Sergey Bobrovsky to ever be as good as he was last year ever again. They're fucked, man. They're uh, fucked. I can see Montreal getting hot because Montreal plays really hard. Like, they don't have the talent to be cont- a contending team, but every night they're trying really hard. What's their record in the last 10? Uh, they're 2-7-1. They're <laughs> one of the coldest teams in the league. Yeah, but they, I'm saying they could get hot. They could. They, they could, could go on. Not, I'm not saying, like, hot and, like, they go on a 10-game winning streak or anything, but they can stay afloat. The best last 10 of all of those teams are the Ottawa Senators and they're 5-4-1. and one. <laughs> Yeah, they've, they've been all right. They've been all right. Um, the funniest answer by far is Vancouver. Oh, man. Can you imagine? Dude, JT Miller is... So, uh, this is the text I'm Steve sends us. I'm fascinated with this player. Oh, you have it? Yeah. So, uh, Steve sent us this and this was his... Was this his bottom stat line or was that midway through the game? Did this change? No, no. This was at the end of the game. So, his stat line after last night's game was one goal, two assists, three points, Two even strength points and a negative two. He was on ice for three even strength goals against. And one of the quotes we missed over the holidays was him saying, well, the reason I'm not producing as much is because I'm not cheating the game as much as I used to. 
and I'm playing better defense. He's one of the most shocking defensive players in the entire league, bar none. You'd you'd uh, you'd have to pay to get him off your team. Well, now you do. And what's crazy is they were talking in the intermission shows, and they're like, "Well, the the Canucks don't want to pay more more for Bo Horvat than they did for JT Miller." They're just why not? They're not why a, they're not a smart or- organization, man. Like, but this was supposed to and be it's top down. Rutherford, Alvin, Castengay. Uh, they were supposed to be like this crazy brain trust. Like, they've done nothing. Owner. 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 Here, start at Francesco Aquilini, right? Yeah. Now, who's beneath him? Uh, Jim Doesn't Rutherford. matter. Go ahead. Name another one. Patrick Doesn't Alvin. matter. Mm-hmm. Name another one. Emily Castengay. Doesn't matter. Okay. If your owner is a bag of rocks, <laughs> it's you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere. Uh, listen, I don't care if you had three points. Got outscored. Boo. Bad. Well, it's like the Van Riemsdyk, Bozak, Kessel line. They were the only line that could score for the Leafs, and they were a minus. Yep. <laughs> they, out, uh, they scored the most points on the team every night and got outscored. The, those teams were bad. Yeah. They were bad, man. Don't know what you want. Man, there was a clip going around of Tyler Myers. Like, oh my God, shocking. What about his like, play? He, he just, he was chasing someone behind the net, bailed, and took the far post. Like the post not? Like, okay, like he so, bailed. so okay, heading, here's the net. Here's the net. Is he chasing uh, behind the net? So he's chasing behind, so he's on the left side of Adam's phone, uh-huh. goes around the, ba- the attacking player is on the left side of the phone, goes around the back of it, uh-huh. and uh, comes to the right and side. Curls. Myers... Stops up here and takes this post. Sits on the left post. <laughs> and so naturally wow. that puck went in. Um, uh, I want to, uh, <laughs> I had a look at it and I, I love this, by the way, the OHL trade deadline this year is super interesting because an NHL player like Shane Wright could be dealt and will be dealt likely. It was cool actually on Saturday night when I was at the game because Shane Wright and a few other players like Owen Beck were, were there from Team Canada and Shane Wright got the biggest cheer and got a standing ovation. I just thought it's like a Kraken player getting a standing ovation. There's something a little bit weird, but it's also it's amazing. Capped, it's Captain of Canada. I know, but it was just one of those. It's like how that's his I, story's easy to cheer for. Though. Absolutely, yeah, it's easy to like. Man, uh, his season is not gone. Uh, probably the way a lot of fans of his would have envisioned. Mm-hmm. I gotta say. You know, for all the shit we gave Seattle, they're looking pretty smart right about now. Oh, yeah. They're still Mm. in a playoff spot, and their (laughs) top prospect who's not uh, in the league right now... Is probably going to the London Knights because he doesn't want to go to Ottawa or Barrie. Yeah, that was uh, Ken Campbell who had that. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's official yet. Not yet. But uh, no, he's he's doing great. And like, who feels better about themselves right now than him? You know? Oh, it's a great way to boost your confidence. Yeah, when when he was a healthy scratch all that time, I'm like, this guy must like freaking hate hockey right now. And I haven't seen him uh without a smile on his face for a month. I um I want to talk a little bit about the OHL trade deadline because obviously Shame Wright's involved in that and you know Bedard's involved in that. Like people are all very interested in what's gonna happen. CHL. But, sorry, yeah. CHL, yeah. So the trade deadline's fascinating because these guys will trade picks three, four, five years into the future. Yeah. And they, Steve. So, so they capped that apparently. Oh, did they? Because they were trading like infants and now it's four years into the future. That's the max you can go. But you can trade as many. Why does hockey as you just, want. why does hockey limit itself? Like, what are you doing? Why? What purpose does that serve? I don't know. Just trade the fucking pick. Who uh, cares? But anyway, Steve, I want you to read this like you're Stone Cold Steve Austin. So yeah. I am the Kamloops Blazers. And from you, I have received Olin Zellweger what? And, and Ryan Hoffer. No, no. Oh. I want you to read this. You're the Silver Tips. And you have received, <laughs> look at all the, the draft picks are unbelievable just on their own. So, okay. You got to be, you got to be say the what the mark then. Okay. You got to say what you got to be the jabroni mark. Okay. And, and you got to say what? Okay. All right. Drew Englot. What? Caden Hamill. What? Rylan Pierce. What? Jack Baker. What? 2023 first. What? 2023 second. What? 2023 fourth. What? 2024 first. What? 2024 fifth. What? 2023 fifth. What? <laughs> 2025 first. What? what the f- 2025 third. What? 2026 first. <laughs> what? 2026 second. What? Conditional. <laughs> I'm glad they put the condition on that pick, by the way. Conned. Yeah. <laughs> and 2026 sixth. What? What? 2026. 
Yeah. Get out of here. It's an unbelievable trade, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks like 10 picks. And also, um, the silver tips. Did, is this the same one, or did I... Did I uh, yeah, the Everett silver tips. Uh, oh, no, that's the same one. That's the same thing. I, I had a different uh, trade lined up, but I, I reposted it twice in my notes. Forget it. I just think... Um, it's funny, and I think Down Goes Brown was tweeting about this. He's like, general managers in the NHL are like, oh, I don't know what we can do. Uh, yeah. And then I know the OHL doesn't have a salary cap, but that's what you can do. Oh, they don't, they don't friggin' care. Like, they, uh, and, and it's been like this forever. This is a particularly big one. So, do, do I still have it in my phone? I, what I tried to find was, uh, there were two, two trades I thought of with astronomical returns mm -hmm. and i found this one head coach and general manager lauren mulliken announced today that the saskatoon blades hockey club have made a trade with the brandon wheat kings to acquire center Braden shen in a oh. 2012 third round pick in exchange the blades have given up four picks a first round in 2011 second round in 2011 first round in 2012 and a first round in 2012 uh the import draft the blades also included two uh prospects uh Ayrton Nickel and Tim Magali and the other one that I thought of was Tavares now this one yeah I remember uh, that one I That's wrote about this one. in the book because it uh I I had to uh write and prepare the shows for Junior Hockey Magazine for Gino Retta and just as I finished my script for the day this trade was made and I had to crumple up and throw out the entire thing Tavares' agent, Pat Brisson, confirmed the deal on Thursday. The deal includes five other players and six draft picks. Oh. Defenseman Michael Del Zotto, a first-round pick of the New York Rangers, and goaltender uh, Daryl Borden are also headed to London, while Oshawa receives a package of forward Christian Thomas, defenseman Scott Valentine, and goaltender Michael Zador. In addition, the Generals will also get six draft picks, London's four second-round picks for the next four years, and the Knights' third-round picks in both 2010 and 2011. Wow. Big, big deal, because you got to swing for the fences. If you think you have a chance, you got to go for it. Well, and London always seems to have a chance, and it seems like they're going to get Shane Wright eventually. You know uh, what happened in London, though? What that happened? year, they lost the tightest five-game series in hockey history. They lost to the Windsor Spitfires, who ended up winning the Memorial Cup, Ryan Ellis and Taylor Hall and all them. Um, they lost in five games. Each one of those five games went to overtime. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. What a series that must have been. You're, you're a goal away. Like it could have gone, could have been a London sweep, could have been London in five. Who were the Knights two top centers that year? Uh, I don't know if, I can't remember if both of them played center. They might've even been on the same line, but it was Nazem Kadri and John Tavares. That's right. Very, very, very good team. Mm -hmm. um, Not bad. Very Not cool. Bad. Anyway, the the OHL trade deadline is super fun to watch. So what I want to do is is talk a little bit about the Leafs this weekend. Sure. And then I want to go. I re want to rewind the last couple of weeks. Okay, guys. So that's how I want to kind of structure this. Let's start with Connor Timmons, who oh, had my God, seven man. career points in forty one games coming into his Leafs tenure, and he now has ten points in twelve games. And I'm curious as to how he could even be scratched at this point. And his first NHL goal. I he did not have a perfect game against the Flyers, but like he's a good player, man. It's not just about the points. Um he does a lot of really smart things. Mm -hmm. uh, he's defensive with an offensive slant, which I think is exactly what the Leafs are looking for. My question is unless there's an injury, who do you take out? They put Justin Hall up with Morgan Riley. I don't think they're jacked about taking that guy out. Uh you have Lilligren and Sandine. Well, you're not taking Lilligren out. And you're not And that's a good Sandine pairing. Out. It's a good pairing. They had a bit of a speed wobble. They were they were great last night. And then you got Mark Giordano who's not coming out of the lineup unless it's to rest him. Mm -hmm. Uh and TJ and, Brody. And TJ Brody who was out of the lineup to I, rest. Uh, yeah, to rest or whatever. Who do you take out, man? I the logical answer, it's I think Justin is Hall, Hall. but no. But is Connor Timmons better than Justin Hall? And has he earned that trust yet? And maybe not. I think so. But <laughs> like, Jesse, you say you, no. You, you hit on it kind of in the LFR briefly. when Because the reaction should be is like, oh, no. 
The Leafs have an awful problem where they have seven defensemen. Yeah. Oh, this is awful. No, this is good. And Jordy guys- Ben was good when he wasn't injured, too. Yeah. Yep. They, dude, they had two great games this weekend, and the solution to a problem that doesn't exist shouldn't be to scratch a guy who played in both games. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. this is uh this is a good issue for the Leafs. They have seven qualified defensemen. Unfortunately for Timmins, like he's the odd man out unless there's an injury. And the the thing with the Leafs this season, there's always an injury to their defenseman. He's going to get in there. Guys need rest. Guys get hurt a little and he's going to get some time, but right now it's Sandy and Lily, Geo Hall, mm-hmm. uh Riley Brody, and that's it. This is the deepest and most versatile the Leafs defense has been in a long time. And the reason I say versatile is the amount of different pairings they've had is wild, and the amount of them that have actually worked is pretty wild, too. It's, it's interesting. The, the first three months of the season, and I do want to do a bit of a wrap on those first, the first half of the season with you guys in a little bit, so let's not get too much into that, but it's interesting that it's almost played out like the playoffs do. Like There's injuries. You got to play with somebody else a little bit. for a few, four, four or five games, and you got to learn. Yep. And they've, they've done quite out. well. Sorry. <laughs> um right. what what did you see over the last by the way i was at the game on saturday night the indigenous uh celebration night was awesome but those jerseys are spectacular mm-hmm. you, so cool you can still get them on the real sports website for auction none of the jerseys are available for less than a grand they're they're sick and the they're pucks so are cool. 250 bucks my bet and I know a lot of people are sort of complaining about this. I think you have to like register this stuff with the NHL or whatever before the season starts, but to get it done. But I imagine that they're playing in those jerseys next year. Oh, man. like I think like the NHL got one ruled. game for crying out loud. I think I think that this probably happened later than they were, you know, because there's probably like a deadline where you have to register your jerseys, right? I don't think the Leafs are like, ha, hmm. let's let's not use this. I'm I think that it was probably something that came along later, and they'll probably have it be a jersey next year and the profit from these auction items by the way go to indigenous charities i don't remember the exact name of it but i saw some people like oh so the leafs just pocket that no a- apparently not. <laughs> no 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 well Do i don't like, know it's MLSC, man look it up come on guys what oh, oh. steve the, adam you're focusing you on the wrong thing it's they're doing a good thing hooray <laughs> exactly hooray it's so were they up. they're focusing on the wrong thing and of course steve you were complaining about the price of the jerseys because they're way out of your budget to bid on one but you can yeah, but get. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, it's a good thing because the money's going to charity. Yeah, yeah. you can get a nameplate from the locker. Oh, those that's new. Yeah, those weren't up. They're the uh, Marley's nameplates. Oh, they're Marley's. Yeah, so you get like oh, Kyle, they did it as wool. well. You get Kyle Clifford. Oh, you know what? Yeah, eight, eight I, want, and I want Wool. Joseph Wool undefeated, okay, see, and he made see. what was it? Fifty six saves yesterday. Fifty eight against Laval. Fifty eight. Joseph Wool. Toronto Marley's indigenous indigenous celebration game locker room nameplate and sweater patch, eighty dollars is the current bid. Uh oh, that's gonna Uh-oh. make a dumb purchase. <laughs> uh oh. So I, there's the there's the sweater patch you get right there. Oh, that's I, nice. You get that one, and then you also get uh, that uh, that right there. I guess that's really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, you should get definitely buy that. Uh oh. It's gonna be a silly goose. Oh, like that very much. Um, (laughs) like that very, very much. Uh, so, so I I have to say, being there as well on Saturday, Oscar Soderblom in person, Elmer, Elmer, excuse me, Elmer Soderblom in person. Just to give you an idea, the guy's six eight on his feet. (laughs) He he is so big out Mm -hmm. there. It's it's like you know when you play Chell and you go up against you know a max height team. Like all the players are max height, and the you're like, worst. screw these guys. I hate them so much. When, when you're playing threes eliminator and interference is legal. <laughs> oh my god, leave me alone. Threes is awesome. He Soderblom is it's it's he's a creative player, and oh, when yeah. he's out there, you can see like I'm, I'm I'm I was thinking there. I was like watching him, and I'm thinking about Tage Thompson, and I'm thinking, is the NHL going to swing back tall again? Because it went small for the I, last five, six years. I called this years ago. I called this years ago. Because the market inefficiency, th- okay, it was all big, slow guys. That's right. The, the market inefficiency was little, fast guys. And the big guys are going to find their way out of the league. So what did the big guys learn to do? They got fast. Skate! They figured out how to skate. They got ridiculous hands. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh, everybody. Yeah. I do think you might be fucked. Uh, the Leafs also last night got a little bit of depth scoring too, like Zach Aston Reese getting his fourth goal. 
Um, how important is that going to be in the back half of the year, do you think? They need it. Uh, they need it bad. It's something that they they struggled with. He now has more goals than names. Pointed out <laughs> I like that. LFR. I like that a lot. Um, at that third line, really do struggle to put it in the back of the net, but I feel like they do such an effective job. Like, Kerfoot's really found his niche. Uh, Engvall and Camp make beautiful music together. Mm-hmm love camp as a player everyone keeps talking about the bunting extension extend that guy kyle eight years right now do it um and aston reese and holmberg have formed this great duo that you can put anyone with them holmberg's a a really interesting one because you know he's a late round pick overage pick too yeah it wasn't like who was talking about holmberg before this unless you were like a hardcore marley's follower no one was talking about this guy and he's come in and he's like that's my spot now that's my spot. And remember when the Leafs were not playing well earlier in the season, it's in part because they had their three centers and then they could not figure out who the other guy was. Right. And Camp was playing fourth line. Camp, yeah, quote unquote, fourth mm-hmm. line. But uh, uh, looking at the team, Engvall was there. Kerfoot was there. Uh, Yarn Croak, they tried at center. Um, and I want to say some guys who aren't even on the team anymore. You know, think of all the guys who went through the bottom six. Remember when Nicolo Obeku Bell was on the team? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, they they could not figure it out. Holmberg went in and he stabilized everything up front. And then they kind of went on a run. Matthews, Nylander, Marner, bah. It's Holmberg, Holmberg who stirs well, the drink. And uh, Callie Yarncroke has done an admirable job basically doing anything this year. But But on that second line. It's cool to see Marner and Tavares together because they played so well together the first year mm-hmm. that they were in Toronto together. But Tavares, it, I mean, I think he had three goals this weekend. Um, one yeah. last night and two, yeah. two against Detroit. Mm-hmm. Marner with another three assists last night. But I want to talk, before we get to them, I want to talk about Yarncroke and what he brings to that line because that's, ne- that's always been the question. It was, you know, Hyman and Matthews and then either Nylander or Marner on the top line, right? That was yep. always a, yep. but what they haven't been able to figure out is that second left winger yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was, did we do, is it Kapanen? Is it Janssen? Is it all the guys that Brown, have, Brown, like all the people that were cycled through there, is Yarncroke the guy or are they still looking at the deadline? <sighs> I think you still got a look. Yeah, that's still a spot you can upgrade. Like even uh, the JVR hype kind of died down a little, but like <laughs> well, JVR would still be a lot of fun there. He'd be oh. great on the power play. Just yeah. Oh, wonderful tipping. for vibes, right? Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> but like even last night when later in the game they had Holmberg with Simmons and Bunting, I'm like, ooh, that's a little fun. <laughs> that's pushing Bunting down is fun, but when he's on, he's, you know, that that line is unreal. It's weird. They didn't have the best game last night. Um, still won by four goals. Um, if you can get a guy to push one of Bunting or Yarncroke, probably Yarncroke down. Yeah. I mean, then you get Yarncroke in the position that you got him for. I don't... The Leafs tried so many different things before Yarncroke at that 2LW spot that I'm willing to bet they were caught off guard by how well this has worked out. So I think that's still the position they improve at. Um, I have no idea where they put them, though. Yeah. It's uh, just, yeah. Yeah. Like, you can why break greedy. up that third line? You can get greedy here because your defense is working out so well. Like, defense has been the thing that all season and all off season, like, oh, you need to go get a defenseman. You improve the defense. The defense is fine. Let's not go mess with this. We already have eight defensemen who are decent. Let's go get a forward and get greedy about just having a scorer on that second line. And I, I and, had a tweet prepared and I clicked off. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, the other thing that Jesse, to do your point is, uh, the Leafs goaltending, uh, itself as well, which yeah. has been unbelievable this year too. And it's sort of like Sam Sonoff is still at a nine sixteen despite a couple of bad games. I mean, followed by a good one, followed by a good one. Matt Murray at a nine sixteen as well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. If he had a he had a surprisingly good game, and I say surprisingly because he, he shouldn't have had to have as good of a game as he did against Philly. Against Philly, and yeah. you look at the three goals the Leafs allowed this weekend. Uh, Luke Wallman, a defenseman coming out of the box, gets a breakaway. That mm-hmm. was the only goal he scored on Simsonov. Marner, who's the best defensive forward on the team, uh, with a breakaway or with a breakaway, sorry, with a giveaway straight to Travis Konechny. 
that's very uncharacteristic. It's rare. It's not the sort of thing worth flagging, but you're hanging your goalie out to dry. And then you get a nasty, like, toe drag, forehand, backhand from Nick Delorier. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, three goals that you can count on not being available to your opponent most nights. That's good. That's really good. I'm like, after a couple weeks that made me really nervous, mm-hmm. that was a nice little weekend. Keep it up. I, I, yeah. And I, I do want to talk about those. I, I think with all that said, like it, Friedman has kind of said, and I think CJ's talked about this a little bit. It's sort of like, what are the Leafs going to do? Well, they're going to make a move, one move, because mm-hmm. that's all they have the capital for or believe oh. all, they, all they believe that they have the capital for. And really, when you look at the defense and you look at the goaltending, you don't really have the need there. Um, so I'm so excited to listen to CJ show today. Yes, that's called a plug because he wanted to talk about the Leafs today. And oh, they, you saw the group chat message, right? I saw yeah, the group yeah. chat message. He didn't say what though, and I love when he well, does that. They're like, tell Andrade to post that thing as fast as possible. <laughs> Nick, get it up because literally all he does is he goes I'm talking about this. And he leaves it as a nice little juicy teaser. So, yes, I could talk about this, Adam. Mm-hmm. I want to hear what CJ has to say. This, <laughs> this next, like, month and a half, I mean, this, this is the CJ show's extended Super Bowl. Absolutely. Right? Leading up to the trade deadline, the dude never leaves his phone. He just glues it to his hand. Oh, I want that. I like that. Now, um, with regards to... Um, the stars on this team. Tavares, three goal weekend. Marner had a three assist night last night. Matthews has got his next 20 goal season locked up. He's the third American player ever to start his career with this many 20 goal seasons in a row. And through all the injuries and stoppages and wow. yeah, everything. It's amazing. Um, and Nylander playing, Nylander and, and, and uh, Matthews playing great together. They, they have a great sort of it's less explosive than martyr matthews but there's something about them about watching them that they i they it's it is it is like when you watch when you watch uh martyr and matthews play on the same line together there's like a it's less chaotic yeah is that what you'd say i think it's less uh, martyr matthews was completely unpredictable right okay yeah i feel like there's a little bit more structure to tavares martyr yard group. okay i like that yeah i like that so my question to you is, um, right now, right now, who of them is the best player on the Toronto Maple Leafs? Who's playing the best? And I want this for both of you because they've all had their sort of moments. Who's the best of the four right now? I absolutely hate the discourse around Austin Matthews like he's having a bad season. I hate it. I hate it so much. Because the games are readily available in so many different places, mm-hmm. and you can watch them. <laughs> and he looks great. Like, even last night, which wasn't the best game. Like, you know, some players can talk about how they're getting tough assignments mm-hmm. and how they're not cheating the game. That's Matthews. That is Matthews. And he's getting his power play cookies. And listen, he is a little snake bitten, mm-hmm. and he is having a more difficult time. Uh, getting into scoring position, but the attention to detail he's paying on defense this year is next level. So because he's the number one center and doing that, I'm tempted to say him. Oh, Marner with that 23 game point streak, Mm -hmm. top power play, top penalty kill. Is he not the best leaf this year? He certainly deserves the all-star nod. What's, what's the specific question is it best leaf right now is it best best leaf for the entire season what are we what are we judging on let's say let's uh, how about we do both best leaf right now over the last two weeks yeah best leaf this season and then that'll dovetail nicely into our 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 you know first half sort of discussion last two weeks i don't know if this will catch you by surprise but last 13 games for the toronto maple leafs william nylander has 17 points Austin Matthews has 16 points. Mitch oh. Marner has 16 points. Oh. Uh, that's William Nylander leading the way. So you're saying Willie? 
I think he's he's figured something out this season. Like he looks he looks a little more special out there. I love I love when he gets to the front of the net. They were talking about it. I think it was the broadcast last night or on Saturday where he gets to the front of the net and he's not he's not doing the Michael Bunting thing in the front of the net. He's he's dancing around. He's moving and then he gets the he gets the rebound. And he's always in position. And I think his shot looks a little more deadly. William Nealander has been great, but like this season, Mitch Marner has been at a whole other level with his game. It's hard for me not to say that Mitch Marner hasn't been the best Leaf. So far yeah. this season, after his sl- after the entire team slow start, since then Mitch Marner for me has easily been the best leaf. You know, like <laughs> you think of all the guys who have been like locks for the Selkie conversation o- over the last like generation, Taves mm-hmm. and Kessler and Bergeron and and all them, Kopitar. I don't remember any of their teams being like, ah, you're as good as a defenseman. <laughs> Like mm-hmm. the Leafs, like forget in the preseason where they were forced into a situation where they're like, ah, okay, we need to throw out forwards in a preseason game as defensemen. No, the reason they did the five forward power play wasn't to get their five best players out there. They're like, ah, Mitch is as good. That's fine. So, and now they're just doing it. I saw them do it on Saturday. They abandoned yeah. it last night because they got Riley back in there to try and get him going. They don't need it. Yeah. And it's a little, <laughs> they, it got exposed the other night when Mitch, they got allowed that short hand a goal. Yes. Mitch, Mitch was going forward because he's not yes. a defenseman yeah. and he wasn't skating backwards on the play and he couldn't be in position. So in those situations, like, let's just, let's, okay, we have Morgan Riley, throw him in there. We don't need to force it here. And, like, and Sandine and Timmons who yeah. put up a lot of power play cookies and Giordano and like, Mm-hmm. You don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> but, no. but to it's Mitch's fun. credit, they can do it because that yeah. guy is so talented at the other end of the rink, and he's been the most versatile and the best Leaf so far. At risk of sounding Toronto centric, because you know we would never want Why? that. On, not on this show. I know that wingers like Yeri Lettinen was like the last winger to win a Selkie. Hosa never got one. Hel- no, no. Hosa never got. It was ridiculous. Yeah. But you have to think Marner's in the top three this year, right? <sighs> Kills penalties, Ooh. scores like crazy, quarterbacks power plays, like defensive quarterbacks right, power plays. Right, right. Um, and and really, like, even when Riley's on that power play, Mitch is the guy quarterbacking it. He has been top 15, and I think even once top 10. In Selkie? Yeah. Uh because you gotta earn it with the Selkie, right? Because the Selkie's less obvious. It's easy to it's easier to vote on a heart. If you're an out of town, because it's the writers that that vote on it. Can I tell you? On the South. 14 is his highest. Really? Yeah. Like, it's easy for... 10, No, 10. 10 in... uh, Canadian division. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, It's it's harder harder to, like, (laughs) to watch all 32 teams and go, who's a good defensive forward, right? (laughs) So, so you have to earn the Selkie. The Selkie takes years to earn. You to develop that reputation. And I'm just wondering if he's in that conversation, because really, what takes him out of it? What about Mitch Marner's game would take him out of the conversation of being one of the top three all around slash defensive players in the league? Oh, oh give away, giveaways like last night's. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was a bad giveaway. <laughs> that was really terrible. <laughs> he, okay. didn't, he didn't see him. Who was, the, who was the one who just caught the puck on his stick? It, uh, he, connect me. Connect yes, me. It was so <laughs> bad that I shouted out. You know what I shouted at the TV when he did it? Mm-hmm. Oh, Tim! <laughs> I thought it was Lilligren. And then I see it's Marner. I'm like, what were you even doing there? Yeah. What were you doing yeah. there? Why why are you playing the puck from the goalie? You're the why right you... winger. What are you doing at yeah. left D? It was a lot. Stop that. It was bad. It was bad. It, <laughs> the the producers in the truck, like I, I, I Credit to them, I guess, when you show the guy who does the awful turnover on the bench just looking sad. Oh, hey, it's always yeah. a heartbreaking camera oh. angle, but I guess they got to do it. Uh, here, this one's fun. Marner was 16th in uh, Selkie voting last year. More notably, he was second on the Leafs in Selkie voting. Matthews was 10th. There you go. Because he play center and had 60 goals. Yeah. And I mean, was legitimately a good. He worked on that part of his game, yeah. He's, and what's funny is he's going to get way fewer this year because he doesn't have the same goal scoring. I think he's a better defensive player. I don't know what the numbers say. I'd like to see that. Um, But the effort is clearly there. He's involved in, it seems like he's involved in more puck battles. Mm -hmm. Seems like he's winning them more. Okay, now. Connor Brown, by the way, won first place Selkie. No, no, won second place Selkie. When? Trophy vote last year 
or what year is this? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, 20, 20, 20, 21. So two years ago, Connor Brown, when he played for Ottawa, got a second place Selkie Trophy vote. Well, that would be an Ottawa writer. Uh, <laughs> we can find who did that, I think. I don't, we don't need do a we blast. we need to do no. that? Oh, yeah, we do. No, I don't know. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Second um, place solo key vote. All right, I got some. Holy uh, shit. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right winger, yeah. Ottawa Senator. Definitely. Connor Brown. For sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. If you had to bet today, you're at Sports Interaction, you downloaded the app. Oh, I got my your Toonie. Your Steve. I got my Toonie. And your, your $40 billion Jesse. Because that's your limit, right, Jesse? Yeah. Forty billion, <laughs> no limits. Drake, Jesse, because yeah. <laughs> you've seen Drake when he's dropping like he's dropping like million dollar bets oh, all the time. Yeah. It's crazy. Easy. So he's not betting. Yeah. <laughs> well, responsibly proportional to his wealth, maybe. Drake's no. also still not, not <laughs> betting that money. No, he's not. He's, he's not. He has, a, he has a deal with that. Yeah, company. yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. He oh. does. But uh, with sports interaction, okay. You're to How pick do the, I get that? You were to pick the Stanley Cup winner right now. Oh. Pick it right now. And I'll give you the odds, but you got to tell me a team. Tell me the team first, and I'll tell you your odds. This is easy. <sighs> yeah, I don't think you overthink it. I think you pick the team that hasn't lost. <laughs> Boston. And, what, yeah, Linus Olmark with 22 1 and 2 is his record, and he's got like a 160 something save Goofy. percentage. Goofy. Goofy. Stupid. You would get still six times your money. What? If they win. Toonie! They haven't no. lost yet. Toonie! Uh, the Avalanche. 12 bucks! I'm going to get you a Toonie. Yeah. yeah. With your face get on it. Yeah. Like a giant one. So you can throw down Toonie every time. Steve. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it's like, Toonie Steve, Steve, who are you dropping the Toonie on? Well! <laughs> well! Oh, sorry, sorry Subwoofer, subwoofer guy. Um, Colorado is second, and the odds they'll do eight times your money. Vegas. Second? Oh, yeah. What? They're not in the playoff spot. I know. That's what I found, found so surprising. They're out of the playoffs! Vegas at eight and a, uh, eight seven five times your money. And then Toronto at nine eighteen, Carolina at nine four two, and Dallas at fourteen. Oh, that's a good value pick. Now, Dallas, I want to ask you this one because I think this is the most interesting one of the list. So I'm jumping to it next. It's not next on the list, but I'm doing it. Who do you give the Jack Adams Trophy to now, halfway through the season? The guy who might set the all time wins record. Yeah. <laughs> Like, again, uh, I don't think you overthink it, man. Uh, Jim Montgomery with the Bruins. Yeah, Rick Bonus is in the conversation. I think Keith should be fucking somewhere in the conversation, what about, for God's sake. What about New Jersey Devils head coach, Lindy, Fire Lindy Ruff? Yeah, stock dropping. Well, there, he's, you know he what? He's, a nom. he's second. He's second in the, in the uh, odds right now. He's tied with Rick Bonus. Both of them are at nine and a half times your money. Jim Montgomery, 3.86. Not bad. Like, I, li, uh, to me, Jim Montgomery is a lock. So it's like you lock that bet in right now. Everything. Uh, <laughs> if you have an option to bet on Boston, I suggest you do it. Okay. I'm going to do it I right like now. That. There you go. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Who now, are they playing next game? Oh, you mean for the cup? Yeah, yeah. For, uh, oh, you're for all these. Fan. So two more. Boo. Not the cup for the... the um, Jack Adams? Jack Adams. Two oh. more going into the second half of the year. Okay. And remember, keep in mind, the second half could be completely different just for the fact that certain teams are going to go fuck it, Connor Bedard, right? They're yeah. going to trade everything that doesn't move, which means it'll be like um, uh, Power Rangers when like Megazord puts himself together and like adds a whole bunch of extra <laughs> shit, <laughs> you know, um, the good teams will get a lot better. The bad teams will get a lot worse. Yep. Eastern Conference outright. I think you bet on the Bruins, which is still four times your money. But Carolina's five. And Toronto six. Carolina's a real good team. They got Max ready back. I, and he scored <laughs> twice. He's amazing. Amazing Dude. player. How do you just. And he's pissed too. I you know he's pissed. They had a fourth line. Uh, I forget who the right winger was, but Patches was on the left with uh, Cocky Niemi in the no. middle. Damn. <laughs> Former Habs line. Love yeah. that. <laughs> dangerous. dangerous. Uh, second. So it's interesting. Where do the Colorado Avalanche sit right now in the standings, guys? Like in the whole league, they're one spot. They're ninth in the conference. Ninth in the, in the west, so they're yeah. they're one spot out of that second wild. So spot. I think you'll find this funny. Sports Interaction has them as the lock to win. What the Western Conference outright four times your money if you get it. So I am. So if you're not betting Colorado, who are you betting? Well, I'm taking my toonie and bringing it elsewhere. Um, I oh, I do like Dallas. 
And I do like Vegas. So Dallas is eight times your money. Vegas is four and a half times. Oh, I throw that toonie on Dallas then. Do you? Yeah. I want to trust Logan Thompson. Oh, it's not I don't against play, him. You know, you know it's not. It's great. It, it's just that you, it's like Ottinger is like the first time when he was good. You're like, is it for real? Or is it a flash in the pan? Two really, is this Broder or is it Peter Ring? Two really good teams who are such wild cards because they seem to face so many injuries. Like Vegas mm. and Dallas. Like mm-hmm. they when they face injuries, like no one's ever out for a game. No one's ever like, ooh, uh, yeah, I'm having a rest day. It's like, no, I'm out 14 months. <laughs> <laughs> My pick would be Vegas. Vegas? To go to the finals out of the West. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no, that, that's just that's just to win the West. Oh, to win the just t- to win oh. the West. Yeah, yeah. No, I pick Vegas though. Pick Vegas. Yeah. Now I want to ask you guys this. Um, over the last 41 games, we're going to play the word association game. Okay. Mm-hmm. What words would you associate with the Toronto Maple Leafs season thus far? What words come to mind? Injuries. Mm. Injuries. Mm. What else we got? Perseverance. Okay. Streak. Okay. Mitch. Streak. Oh. Structure. What's the structure thing? The, where they they're they're boa constrictors and they they don't blow leads like they used to they they wrap you up okay but give you a big hug that you're not necessarily asking yeah for. and it kills you and then they eat you alive <laughs> they digest you over several the, months yeah <laughs> get real specific with it <laughs> and then they shed their skin it's crazy yeah. uh, okay all right all right what else we got just give me two more give me two more guys um What you got, Steve? <laughs> you guys are looking at me. You're trapping me. In I'm something. not trapping you. I don't, I don't know, know what you're trapping me. I'm is. not trapping you. I'm I just, don't know what this I game means. No, I'm, I'm all I'm, I'm literally just saying, <laughs> give me some words for the first 41. Is, top five. That's one word. Top five. Top five. Because they've been top five almost the entire time. Tampa. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> Which I believe they're at about 60% chance they'll play Tampa. They're going to play each other. I'm miserable. It's stupid. So you're building your team for Tampa. Yeah. I, I hate my- Which is interesting because <laughs> Dubas has to then approach the trade deadline like whatever Tampa's after, I have to try to bottom out that market as well. Because you saw what happened last year with Hagel, who was supposed to be a Leaf. Yes. Then the deal fell apart and he was a, a Lightning. Now he's a Lightning player. <sighs> right? Mm-hmm. Uh. Right? So that's going to be fast. That will be fast. It's like not is not only is he just trading for his team, but he's kind of got to fuck with Tampa. He's got to fuck with Breezewa, right? He's got to mess with his game a little. Why? Where's your damn extension, MLSC? Do what are you doing? Oh, Brandon? Kyle. Oh, Brandon? I think if if you're if you're him, wouldn't you say, yeah, we'll just wait till the end of the year? No, uh, I guess you didn't want to sign me this summer. We'll talk sign, after the draft. Sign the deal. I Kyle Dubas, I you know what? I I couldn't have imagined a situation where um uh, like after losing the Tampa, I couldn't have imagined a situation where you extend Dubas before knowing how the playoffs go. Sign him before the trade deadline. It's acidine not to. Yep. But what if he just won't? Because you blew he that. Won't. Well, if he just won't, then uh I don't know if he will or not. So I you're, you're planning him. the Leafs are Heavily counting on Austin Matthews signing a contract extension on July 1st. And your GM uh, needs one of his own. It's not the greatest position. Yeah. Before the trade deadline would be nice so he just doesn't go like full Alex Anthopoulos and trade the entire future to win one round or anything Mm. stupid. Here's good news. Whatever amount of money he asked for, here you go. I have a question for you, and this is a headline that we missed. Uh, a couple headlines that were really kind of broke over the over the break, and they were not really headlines so much as they were storylines, narratives, things that people were talking about on Twitter. Number one is the Leafs goaltending all of a sudden bad. Yes or no? Uh, by the numbers, yeah, it was. I think I have the exact numbers. Like what? What I didn't like, uh, you know, people were oh, you know, you can have a bad game or whatever. Like sometimes goals just go in. That's that's regression. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're not going to be a 940 all season. When you're a 940, it's not just because you're playing well. It's because the puck happens to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> no one... Go look how many goalies have, have played over 20 games and been a 940 goaltender over the last quarter century. I'm pretty sure the list is zero. 
It's less than five for sure. <laughs> so if you're uh, if you're a nine forty goalie, it's because the it's you're playing well and the puck happens to hit you. But some of the goals that Murray and Simsonov have been allowing lately are because they don't look like they particularly know what they're doing, <laughs> it, which is weird because they hadn't really played like that. Then it it's one thing if it's one game, another if it's two. And it's another if it appears to be the trend. Right. And that's it, what that's what I was saying going into Saturday's game. Is this now a trend or is this just a blip? So Samsonov, shut that down. And solid. You know, it's the narrative is easy when he gets a shutout. Okay. I, I actually kind of think it's almost better when you allow not just a goal, but the first goal of the game, uh, which he did, and then you just lock it down the whole rest of the way. Matt Murray, again, battled, scraped together a really good game. Yes, it's against the Flyers. Samsono's last six games, which includes a shutout, he is an 890. Matt wow. Murray's last seven games is an 886. It's a regression. Yeah. It's a regression. They're coming back to probably where they should have been, you know? And you don't have a tremendous amount of time to figure this out. So let's say the next, or let's say this week looks a lot like the ones previous mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, to this weekend. You have a very finite amount of time to be like, all right, let's get Joseph Wall up. Uh huh. See how he does. Uh huh. And you got to you got to evaluate your goaltending. You have two. Uh, it, for a while, for the last few weeks, it looked like they had zero. I don't know about that. I think you have two guys that you're trying to evaluate. Don't you leave Wall where he is in his hat? Yeah. Place? Why are you bringing a third goaltender into this? It's and it is see, Adam, Schalker, I, Schalker, I guess, that? is not ahead of Wall anymore. No, no he no. hasn't been very good. Right, he hasn't been very good. I don't think you're bringing a third goaltender into the mix until there's an injury. Well, because if you then get to the trade deadline and they are still in their rut, and this is just what they are—they're sub 900 goaltending, okay. which is what they've been recently. You have to go out and get a goalie. That's the only reason I was saying call up Wool. I'm not saying do it right now, mm -hmm. but if you're going to spend the assets on goaltending when you, for the last few months, have wanted to spend those assets elsewhere, you got to see what you got. Hmm. If you don't need to go out and get anything because Wool's ready and awesome, you need to know the yes or no there. And here's the great thing with Joseph Wool. He signed to less than 800 grand this year and next year. And the era. Waivers? Who's going to hit waivers? No, Joseph Wall. Can you clear? Up and down? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, he's That's good. Okay. Concern. Yeah, he'll be okay. Yeah, he'll be then, okay. Like, yeah. I Maybe. guess you give him a shot. It's, just, it's, just, it's so weird to me. Like, I could see it happening for sure if he remains this hot. Like, as a head coach, I got two goalies here. I got two NHL starting goalies. They're, they're not young guys here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to healthy scratch one and bring up Joseph Wall. That, that like, uh, that's, Dude, a weird, that's a weird conversation. If they're not performing. So I'm going to have three goalies on my roster, and one of them is going to be the NHL goalie that we signed this offseason. He's not going to be playing. Another thing that needs to be discussed is, okay, I got this young goalie in Elias Samsonov. He's an RFA. Does he want to resign? And if he doesn't, you might have to look at trading that goalie. That's Dude, interesting. there's a lot of... And listen... If if both Murray and Simpson have played great for the next few weeks, the, the conversation's moot, right? If they play the way they did in earlier in December and later in November, if they play that way, pff, spend the farm on Timo Meyer, or go out and get a defenseman, whatever you want. We don't even talk about the goaltending. We haven't talked about the goaltending for, you know, a while now. But if they continue to give you Sub 900, you learn from your mistake last year and you go out and you get some. Is the other headline that was narrative, whatever you want to call it, is Morgan Riley bad at hockey, bad for the organization? <laughs> and should he be shot into a cannon? Wow. Shot out of a cannon and to another team? What has the storyline been with the Leafs defense this season? Uh, how they've plugged the gap despite all the injuries. Despite is the operative word there. Because they used a wide variety of guys on defense and it worked. Your reaction to that was trade Morgan Riley because it worked. 
Yeah, no, no. How about oh, sure. how did it make you feel? Like what emotion did it give you? Surprise. Surprise. You know why? Happiness. You're not supposed to do that. Mm. It's not it's not supposed to work that way. And when guys came into the lineup, they were great. You know how I reacted to that. Surprise! That's not how it's supposed to go. Whenever a guy has a long layoff and then returns to the lineup and scores that game, it's surprising. That's not how it's supposed to go. Hey, did you just go back to school after a layoff or uh, some of the teachers out there? Oh, there was some moaning in the dangle house. I'm sure there was. Did, are, yeah, Nobody you, likes going back after break. Yeah, you went back for the first time in a couple of weeks. What, how are you doing today? Crisp? You crisp? Yet yeah, your best? Right? Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to be. So when Morgan Riley came back and did not look good, I wasn't surprised. I was concerned. Over the last few games. I think he's gotten it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it was difficult for him to get into his groove because he wasn't in his usual spot Mm -hmm. on the power play. And, you know, depending on how the special teams go now, it's difficult to, you know, I'm trying to get my feet under me and my feet are on the bench. It's not a recipe for success. Listen, uh, if you actually think Morgan Riley is hurting your team, you got to explore that trade conversation too. But I don't think they think that. Okay. Can Joseph Wall play in Morgan Riley's spot? <sighs> Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, what did you think? Uh, <laughs> 100%. Uh, switching gears, what did you think of John Tortorella's comments after Travis Konechny was, quote unquote, <laughs> snubbed from the All-Star game? What, oh, so what did he say? Oh, so I, I can actually I say, yeah, I can send this to you. Do you want me to send it to you? Yeah, yeah. This is from uh, Sam Chikar- uh, yeah, Karchidi from, uh, uh, who's been a Philadelphia reporter forever and ever. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesse, I'm going to send you that on text right now. There you go. Mm-hmm. So essentially, I think Kevin Hayes is going to the All-Star game, which is kind of cool. Yes. And that's amazing, given what happened. And, yes. You know, with the family and that sort of thing. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome thing. But, and top score. Yeah. And a lot of people thought Konyakny should go too. Sure. And uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I <laughs> go think, instead. Go instead. Because yeah. they're going to have one representative. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, from what I understand, too, uh, I, like I know Torts doesn't care about anything at all. He's always, you know, Mr. I don't give a shit. But I just thought this was a particularly passionate John Tortorella quote. I want to play I'm glad we have the video and audio. It's always different in print. Absolutely. He does not read well. Well, he doesn't. Uh, this one wouldn't read or sound well. Oh, interesting. Have okay. a listen. Okay. It, it, it's, a, it's a tough league to win in no matter who you play. Uh, so we're, we're certainly not going to uh, uh, go in the back door and say that because it's against weaker opponents. I, I think our game is, has grown as a team. John, TK has been arguably your most consistent player all year long. Are you disappointed that he didn't uh, make the All-Star team tonight? They announced oh, the team. I don't even worry about that shit. The, 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 the way they all, the whole game, the whole weekend, it, it, I don't even watch it. I, I think it's it's turned into a, well, I'll just leave it at that. I really don't care. Do you think that he's deserving uh, of I All-Star? really don't care. Talk about All-Star stuff, okay? It, it, it's a... That's- so that's an NHL head coach saying, I don't give a shit about an NHL event. If I'm Gary, I'm not happy. Gary's not going to be thrilled like, about cool. that. Torts, Torts was the kind, like, listen, if it, Gary's got some say in who's on the air. Torts was on the air last year. Mm-hmm. Gary's got some say in who's coaching, who's GMing. We know this from Brian Burke's book. And he, Torts yeah. is now a coach. I mean, I think this hurts the NHL way less than saying Trevor Zegers shouldn't be doing fun things. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's the direction that it goes or that, that the league is going, uh, you know, it's not great that he's like, yeah, I don't give a shit about the all-star game. I mean, in a way it, it solidifies, I mean, the brand of one of the bigger personalities in the sport. Right. <laughs> As oh, there's torts being torts. I th- I think the bigger issue here is like him just flippantly blowing off the like this is a layup like just compliment Travis Konechny it's a, it's a or Kevin Hayes or Kevin Hayes or it's it's a layup and Torts is a is an ornery guy and he pushes buttons and all we've heard over his career like I've I've heard from many people is for how difficult of a coach he is to play for 
guys like playing for him. He, he sounds to some degree behind the scenes anyway, like a player's coach. They like playing for him. The Flyers sound like they hate playing for John Tortorella. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Oh, well, the, the Kevin Hayes quote and then uh, Yandel on the air uh, de- defending Hayes. I think benching Hayes went over like a wet fart. And I I understood the intention behind it. No one's safe. And you watched the Flyers last night. No one should be safe. They suck. They're not a good team. Not a well-constructed team. The GM sucks. But, you know, he did go out and get this guy who's basically uh, over from Mitch and Murray on a mission of mercy because he's trying to find out who on that team can hang. Um, he benched D'Angelo last night too, which is one of the guys it. that they went out and got this summer to yeah. try to get better. Who cares? He's shocking. Like, there's another guy who can put up all sorts of points, shocking in his own end. And you can be sure when a guy does get benched, it's because they did something Torts expressly told them not to do. Right? So, I, yeah, I guess I am defending him in that regard. But at some point, Torts, who is a free man, and bless him for living his life as free as possible. You do got to play the game a little bit. You do got to stroke egos a little bit. I don't know if Kevin Hayes gives a shit. I don't know if Travis Konechny gives a shit. And if neither of them give a shit, then none of this matters. But that is what we refer to as a layup. Like, for all the, all the shit the media gets... Uh, from players and coaches because the media is out to get you. The media gives you so many softballs. That's a softball. That is an olive branch extended to you, John, to calm things down, to make things easier, to put a smile on people's faces, put a smile on the players' faces, on the on the fans' faces. And yeah, you're right. It hasn't been the easiest season, but Konechny has been great. And you know what? Even despite the fact that things haven't been going well, Hayes has been great. And despite all of this, we could have two guys going, nope, you just say, I don't give a shit and walk off. And I don't watch. And I don't watch. Thanks, grandpa. (laughs) Like, that's how you come across, right? Mm -hmm. And he's not one of the older coaches in the league, but that's that's how you come across. I know he doesn't care what I think, but if your players do not like you, and do not want to play for you, that can have adverse effects on your organization. Which is maybe the best thing for the Philadelphia Flyers because Connor Bedard yeah. is available <laughs> in this draft. So maybe John Tortorella is stupid like a fox. Could be. Could be. Let's, maybe he's brilliant. But let's like, just that, destroy people's confidence. Dude, it's such a layup. It's From such a layup. an NHL perspective, I don't, like, it's an awful look to have what he is an employee, really. Yeah. And, talking shit about one of your biggest events of the year like it's the all-star game of the draft er, in and the draft right those are yeah. big two corporate events where you bring all the fans of that city together you bring all the stars and here you have a coach just going out and be like i don't give a shit i don't really care yeah it's the all-star games are turned into i'm not going to talk about that stop like, giving him broadcast jobs lot. when he gets canned he doesn't get it yeah, <laughs> he, I think you get him on though for those quotes that you talk about memorable shit. It does. It gets a little grating from time to time. Like but, you can be honest, but it's a, at some point it's, you're a little too honest. Being disagreeable is not a talent. <laughs> it's not a talent, and this is mm-hmm. why for years I have said full disrespect, full disrespect to Skip Bayless. Fuck that guy. Fuck what he does. Fuck his body of work. Being disagreeable and a uh, and contradictory, contrarian. Being yeah. a contrarian, it's not a talent. Take what people think and say the opposite. Not a talent. I, mean, I don't think that's what Tortorella is doing here. I think he's being honest about his feelings. Yeah, I think he's being extremely so, honest at a point where it's which too we honest. Ask no, for. so Skip, we ask for that. <laughs> yeah, so Skip Bayless does it in a way that I don't think is genuine. So yeah. fuck that guy uh, for a variety of reasons. But when Torts just goes uh trevor zegris uh you know shouldn't be doing fun things because i don't think it's great for the sport or whatever i you shouldn't be able to when john tortorella goes up there and says things or when he gets in front of the mic and says things he shouldn't be saying things that any impressionist could do of him 
Mm-hmm. I would have gone up there in a John Tortorella suit, uh, and you give me the John Tortorella hair, and you give me a Flyers jacket, and I would have said the same shit. But he's that. I don't. Those uh, are his the feelings. All Star game. Those are his feelings. Yeah, his feelings suck, and I don't want to hear him. It's okay that he's being genuine, right. but with that comes the reaction, and my reaction is, ugh, you seem very gross and unlikable. Yeah, I think when he's bashing Zegras for having fun, I think he's being very honest. Yeah. I don't think he's trying to just take another side. I think he's expressing and, yeah, his opinion. Yeah, but opinions. it's a gross and unlikable opinion. But it, and isn't so, it funny, though, that, that with when you when they do interviews and they actually show his softer side he seems like an extremely likable human being yeah. yes and this is part of the reason that i'm like frustrated I'm being particularly hard on tortorella because he does seem genuinely like a good person right so sorry i probably should have maybe led with that because it sounds like i like listen marshand we've hammered him and i think he's a genuine piece of shit when he hits the ice off the ice Great. he seems like one of the better guys in the league Seriously, and seems like a great teammate, and people somebody, love him. Yeah, man. gosh darn it, the Bruins make it so, so hard, to so hate easy them. to like him, or so easy to hate him, and so easy to like him. So hard to hate him, mm-hmm. so hard to hate him, easy to hate him. They okay. make the Boston Bruins are a conundrum. We got it, we got it. And isn't it funny that John Tortorella is from Boston? Maybe he is just Boston incarnate, but he seems like such a good guy. This is a layup. It's a layup, John. This is an olive branch from those evil media who you've worked for and with and apparently never listened to ever once if he's in any on, conversation. If he's on TNT, he doesn't say that. Yes, he does. Oh, I think he does. He absolutely oh, yeah? does. Don't you think? No. If he's, if he's on the broadcast If they partner? have the rights, like if ESPN has, he was on, yeah. was he on TNT or ESPN? I, it doesn't matter. ESPN. Well, let's ESPN. say it's ESPN and they've, yeah. they've got the rights to that game and the All-Star yeah. game's coming up in six weeks. And Torch goes on, that. I don't watch this shit. Yeah. yeah how do you think that goes That's, over? It's not, it's not happening. <laughs> and also, but there's nothing to it. Like, you yeah. can say, you can get up there as John Tortorella and be a caricature of yourself. I don't care about that. I've been to the All-Star game before. I don't know if he has. I think he has. He, he must have. He's been in the co- in, in the year, in the league for friggin' ever. Um, but, ah, uh, the weekend's a pain in the ass and you got to find a hotel and, and, uh, you know, I, I'm this amazing coach. That's why I'm in the all-star game. And my reward is I got to coach more. Bah humbug. I don't want to do that. If he can at least make it funny, but this is just him going, ah, I don't give a shit. Yeah. And literally walking away. He doesn't have that <laughs> skill. Like, uh, like when, when have we ever seen him joke like that? I guess, I guess what I'm trying to kill is the myth that Tortorella is a good quote anymore. He's not. Hmm. He's, Interesting. He's not. Okay. What makes a good quote? Depth. <laughs> Anything interesting at all? Um, you know, maybe I, I, we are going to get comments like, well, he's, he's making you talk about him. Like, I'm talking about And that's this, true. That is That would be true. I'm talking about this in depth because I have a podcast and I'm being like a media critic right now. But I think most people just heard that quote and they were like, oh. Okay. Mm. Oh, ew. I'll be honest. Like, I don't always love the All Star Game. I do find it kind of flat. Oh, he's not saying anything that we haven't said before. Is it the way he said it? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Just dismissive and shitty. Okay. 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 Dismissive and shitty is a very <laughs> that is an apt description. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what? I didn't see this conversation going this way. Sometimes when I bring stuff up and I like throw it to Jesse and Steve, I don't. I don't think about. Where it's going to go, I just know it'll go somewhere. I did not see this going this way. I did not see your reaction as this way. That is a borderline, the reporter works for the team level of ease. Uh, Travis Connect, here's some of the things he does great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Hayes, what a story. The guys love him. And, you know, we haven't always seen eye to eye, but this, but that, but that. No. And like, listen, it's not my job to do this or do that. Is No, but you put this out there. Maybe Kevin Hayes hears about it and it makes him feel good. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it makes the other guys in the team feel good. Maybe it makes his family feel good because they see it. Because a lot of family members of a lot of players in this league cannot help but consume the media uh, about their uh, family member, good or bad. Same thing goes for Konechny. This is, it's... PR man like this is people management and for God's sake you've been in this business for so long I would have thought you had some of those skills Mm -hmm. 
It's just, it just, it's a failed opportunity from John Tortorella. There it is. And like the the All Star Game thing, like we all agree that the All Star Game is for the people who are there. You know, yes. it's never yeah. been the greatest yeah. event for on 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 screen on television. It's probably not even the greatest event, even when you're there, oh. when you when all the events are happening and they're taking twenty minute breaks in between to set things oh. up. But that doesn't mean you can't use that moment as an opportunity to hype up to your your players. It's the verbal equivalent of missing an empty net. You didn't have to. Yeah. Let's do the press conference. You think you know which way it's going to go? Do you? No. No? I, I'm generally very confused. Okay. Well, if you do ever figure yourself out, you should check out Sports Interaction and make your bet, whatever your sport, Sports Interaction has you covered. When do they have you covered, though? They have you covered on their new app oh! that I am holding in my hand right now. I'm looking at a bet. I don't know, Matty Beneers and Jim Montgomery mm. throwing them to win the Jack <laughs> Adams and Calder. Whoa! whoa. Mm. Pre-game, live betting on all major sports Seriously? and prop bets like Jesse just pointed out. Check it out. If you want to bet, head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN no. or you download the app in the App Store. Super easy. Uh, 19 plus. Please play responsibly like Tooney Steve. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. All right, back at it. 2023. Mm -hmm. How long are you allowed to do the thing where you write the wrong date on whatever you're writing? I think you get a month. October. You get time? You're giving them a month? Yeah, I give them a month. October. Not a Christmas tree, though. Fuck that. (laughs) (laughs) Not a fucking Christmas tree. I I married it. Get rid of it. I married my co host. That's why we worked out so long. Maybe. Synonymous. Synonymous. Synonymous? Synonymous? Synonym? Synonym? Yeah, but they spelled it funny. But with synonym. Synonym. I knew who you were talking about right away. Synonym for wet. Uh, wants to give us the heads up that The Bachelor is coming back in about two weeks. Oh, let's go. Oh, ba- so bios time, baby. Bios like that. Oh. Okay, Jesse, we'll wait for you to bring those to the show. Just let me know. B- bachelor bios are my... You're bringing them, right? Yeah, you yeah. I, I can prepare bios. all that. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, this from, by the way, our... Our social media team tweeted out a thing for questions. I was reading from the tweets Mm -hmm. here. Kevin Pope uh, asked us, as a Brit, I don't understand why the All-Star game is talked about so much. Why is it that... Sorry about that. Why is it that makes it so popular across the pond? What is it that makes it so popular? Am I the only person who would scrap it and carry on with a competitive game? No, I think... I I don't think you are. Torts obviously would. Um, I think it's a good break for uh the players who aren't there which is the majority of the players so they have a breather and they get a mental break and they they go and they go to like hawaii or whatever wherever they want to go for a few days but um uh i understand not getting the all-star game for sure but i think the the reason that we have it is because we don't have like when you look at uefa you look at the like the major leagues in 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 um uh, the major clubs in soccer in Europe, and I'm using soccer because it's the biggest game. Uh, they all play each other, and then there's national team stuff. So you see different versions of all-star teams go head-to-head all the time, right? You sort of see, like, you know, if it, Team England is, well, it's the best of England. Italy, Portugal, they're all the best of those players you see them play together. So that's essentially an all-star team, right? Um, we don't get that because because Gary Bettman and Bill Daly are like, nah, World Cup suck. Who, who needs the olympics um so the best that we get is a game that means nothing that's kind of a fart in a windstorm but when you're there it's fun <laughs> the skills comp is more fun than it used to be uh and it's kind of cool to see players do cool shit like if you could get ronaldo and messi and harry kane and whoever else you want on the field doing crazy shit with a soccer ball with cameras on them would love that i'm sure you'd be into it and i so i think there's Locally, it's always a big thing. The NHL obviously goes out of its way to promote it nationally. It's never going to be a great national event. I know the NBA one is the best all-star game in all of pro sports because celebrities show up because it's, it's more pop culture than the game, right? That's what the NBA is, though. It is pop culture right now. Mm-hmm. The baseball one was, was kind of shitty for a few years, but now it decides who gets home field advantage in the, in the uh, World Series. So it mm-hmm. does matter. There's something that matters there. Um, so they play for something. I remember the tie All Star Game, Jesse, where they just ran out of pitchers. Yeah, oh, they, for God's sake! Know, they went like they finished it in the twelfth. They're like, we don't know. 
Yeah. And everybody's like, what is this? And, and the next the year top. they changed it. <laughs> yeah. Pick two fans out of the stands. Yeah, just that. let them pitch. Right. Whatever. Uh, I have a guy pitch more than one inning. Yeah. <laughs> Pro sports in Europe are about competition. Pro sports in North America are about business. And, you know, you talked about best on best, and mm -hmm. it's basically all-star teams when it comes to international competition. The NHL won't do it because they don't see how they make money off of it. Right, because so they, they've never tried. So how could you make money off of something so, you've never tried? Yeah, and it's which is weird to say European pro sports is more about competition than business because they make so much more money. Um, but, you know, the teams with all the money just sort of crush everyone most years because they're not going to do any of this silly bullshit to prop up your pissant team. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the competition has to do with money. It has to do with quality of players. It's It's got to do with with all these things and uh the all-star game is about sell 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 the sport right um when really they should just be focusing on what we scream about every fucking show making the sport better the all-star game is the least good option of the many options that have been presented and tried and tested and are true in every other sport but it's the one the nhl decides to go with each year it's the easiest for them and when you're there, it's a riot. It's yes. great for the media. The players, well, the players are always super hungover for it, so I'm sure they have a yeah. good time. Yeah. And the fans who are there, I remember the Toronto All-Star Game in 2000. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, people say, well, the All-Star Game is fun. You know what's fun? Games. Games are fun. Games are fun. <laughs> I've heard that. Make the games better. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been in a Leaf game and been like, I wish this was the All-Star Game. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to see less Leafs and more players from other Eastern oh, Conference man. teams? <laughs> oh, fuck. You know what would make this better? Two guys from Columbus. Like, <laughs> yeah. stop. Yeah. Stop. No. It, yes, the All-Star Game sells the game, mm -hmm. maybe locally or whatever, but dude, just make the game better. Agreed. Agreed. Make, next. Yeah, what? What? Having an awesome All-Star Game is really going to take you to the next level? Stop. Next question. Make the game better. So I got this question a couple of weeks ago. Or, you okay? Adam, your internet's not working. We're I good. know, I know. We're good. So, Stupid uh, internet. Anyway, you get that fixed. I got this a couple of weeks ago, and it was before, it was after we had already recorded our all trivia episode. So I didn't get a chance to do it. It was from plain Emma Jane on Twitter. Emma tweeted, I want to play a game where two people go back and forth naming point per game players, and the first one to get one wrong loses. And then Emma tagged me and said, Jesse, make this happen. And I want to make this happen. Okay. So is this all time? No. This season. How many are there? Uh, I'm giving you the option to name anybody who's point a game. They could have played one game and scored one point. That's point oh, a game. The, the book is oh, completely open. You're a bum. You can, I mean, Man, you, this is supposed to be easing back into the season, now, not you thinking. Can, you could start with a free square. You could go Connor and Drysidel. You know, you guys go back and forth. First person to name a player who's not point a game, meaning their point total does not equal their games played at least, then they lose the game. You stink. I hate this. Okay. <laughs> Let's go, Stevie. Who wants to go first? You go ahead. Steven Dangle. Connor McDavid. Leon Dreisaitl. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, uh, Sidney Crosby. Jason Robertson. Um, Austin Matthews. Mitch Marner. Oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> William Nylander. Eric Carlson. Oh, I was going to say Eric Carlson. Oh, I don't William like Nylander, by the way, 45 and 41. Ooh. You barely you barely stayed alive. Speaking by. <laughs> wow. Uh, David Pasternak. Mm, that's a good one. Uh, I'm going to say Bradley Martian. Hmm? Let me, let me check. Because oh. that's interesting. That's a risk. I don't know. He, I was actually, that was going to be my next one. Marshy, 32 games played, 37 points. Oh! <laughs> all, right, all right, Steve, you're up. Woo! Um, who's you're already? You guys are like five in, and I know <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm uh, exhausted. <laughs> Elias Patterson. Ooh, picks a Canuck. Elias, he's good though. I know. Thirty-seven, forty-seven. He's good. Okay, I was like, whoa, Man, he's having a good year. Good for him, Adam. Okay. With all that turmoil, um. Easy. William Nylander. You already did that. 
Ah, we already did that. Okay, did you we, did that. Did, did I do that? Yeah, no, he, he did that. No, did you I, did that. No, no I said martyr. I said martyr. He said, oh, you said martyr. Matthew's martyr. And okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were just there. I just said the forty-one, forty-five thing. What the fuck are you guys talking about? Oh man. <laughs> I hate this so much. It's I have to so, think. There's a million no, players. No, you're not in it. You're not in it. When you're in it, it's so hard. Are you doing this? No, I'm doing. This. Okay. Um, I know my next pick, and it's a really dumb one. Okay. Anze Kopitar. Ooh, That's so. I don't think you got of that all one. The risky players, risky. Thirty or forty-three games played. Thirty-two points. Ah. Oh. Adam Wilde is eliminated. I want to play this game again sometime. We should just we keep doing it like every couple weeks. Yeah. Because it'll update, right? Let's do it. That's Let's a just, good fucking it's a, game. Man. Emma, thank you for tweeting that. That's wow. a very great game. We got a new thing for I'm the gonna show. be studying. I, I want to see one. if I would have been eliminated. Go ahead. My next pick was gonna be Josh Morrissey. Why? Because he's like <laughs> the second highest scoring defenseman behind Carl. Yeah, he's 40 and 46. Yeah, show four. your face. But like Kaprizov. Oh, Ovechkin! Oh, <laughs> what, shit. Oh. what do you got? Why do we Dude. keep forgetting him? Tage Thompson. Oh! <laughs> he almost has as many goals as games. I hate it. I hate it. So you know much. what's funny? My brain went. There's someone on the Sabers, and my and I go, <laughs> Tuck, Tuck. Is it Tuck? I forgot about Tage Thompson. Uh, McKinnon. He's oh man, 38 points in 27 games. Rantanen, Jack Hughes, Cal Connor, Kucherov. McKinnon's a really bad one. Matthew Kachuk. I was going to say McKinnon, but he's been injured and I wasn't sure. And yeah, but he's playing a game. Oh, I know, I know. Zach Hyman? Oh, I was yeah. thinking Hyman. <laughs> ah, shoot. Whatever. Ah. John Tavares would have been an eliminator. He's 41 and 40. Oh. I, that's why I didn't say him. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about it, but I was like, ooh. Great little game we got going for the podcast. We'll do that every couple weeks. Good game. <laughs> Fuck me. Like Just that. drop that on us. Don't even tell us when you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can't like prepare for the yes. standing. Yeah, yeah. We should. Um, I should keep track of how far we can get down. I think like, we got. What do we get? Ten there, something like that. Barely. We can count it out. Yeah, I'll count it, it wasn't after, great, but we should. We should you guys should try and beat your record. You it's know? so much harder in the moment. And we'll keep track. So Steve's up one nothing. Okay. Okay. Sure. All right, uh, Adam. Do we have something to announce today? We do. We do. <laughs> um, uh, we have a live show in Kingston coming up on January twenty seventh. Jamaica. No. No, oh, Kingston, Ontario. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Um, so Which we'll, you spoiled on our last episode. Was that bad? Should I not have done You're that? You're an idiot. Yeah. I don't know. If you want to come see us in Kingston, uh, it's right between Toronto and uh, uh, Ottawa. And what I thought was cool about it is that this was the show we were supposed to do on April the 4th, 2020. Um, but of course, we couldn't do it. We promised we'd be back. We're going back. So Friday night... The 20th, that's actually the one weekend where there is no Saturday night game. So Steve will actually have uh, a Saturday night off to himself, which would be nice for you. Um, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. And, and obviously, it's Friday, isn't it? Did it is a Friday. I know, oh, but I'm just oh, saying no, it's, okay. the, it's a non Leafs weekend. And what's great about that weekend is the, it, that Friday night is we're going to do our show a little bit. Uh, we do like a little show and then we're going to watch the Leafs and Sens play because it's Leafs and Sens yeah. on a Friday night, baby. Ooh, Maybe baby. we can watch uh, watch Hockey Night in Canada with Grav. Because <laughs> they, we specifically picked that because I'm like, oh, there's no game on Saturday, so I'll have the night off. And then I got the updated schedule and they're like, oh, yeah, no, we're doing the stream that Friday. Well, and I said, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> so. Well, good old Grav's going to get it. And uh, so anyway, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, and also, once again, let me just say congratulations to S and Gun, or S uh, and Lauren Gun, as we know her. Mm-hmm. Uh, the show launches today. The Objective. Um, the Objective Basketball Podcast. We're super excited for them. So, congrats to them! Yay! And by the time you uh, by the time you can download this, you can probably download that too. Subscribe on Amazon Music or Spotify <laughs> or Apple Music or wherever. Why you did see. you lead with that? You know why? With an a. Do you want to know why I, I led with that? Why? Because when I see the Sportsnet commercials, that's the that's what they lead with. I was like, Amazon Music, huh? Spotify. Uh, they have a one. partnership with them. Do they? Yeah. Let's pay. Do we? Oh, we don't. So we don't. <laughs> All right, let's wrap Can it I up. Ask one last question. Oh, okay. Let's not this wrap it up. This is from at only sky above me. They write, "This has been bugging me for years. Is there beef between the SDP and the Arkells? No. No." <laughs> Why? Why no. are the Arkells taking shots no, at us? We, we just, bring up the Arkells quite a bit. Well, because the Arkells are on everything. <laughs> yeah, we make snide we, comments. We, make, we that bring up stuff about the Arkells. Bring themselves up all the time. 
What other big Canadian function do they play? They're on Hockey Night more than Ron McLean. Absolutely. Man, like, but is it the CFL, a CFL halftime show? It, Bring out the no. Arkells. It's the Arkells. Oh, wait, did they do it? Every, yes. every Grey Cup halftime yes, show. Yes, they did. It's yeah. the Arkells. It's a little bit like, you know, the South Park thing where uh, uh, they have Slash as Santa Claus? <laughs> Vondersloosh? Yeah. <laughs> that is a really deep reference. They, I don't know. They're... Yeah. I like I'm convinced there's it's like the Stanley Cup that there's the original Arkells mm -hmm. and then they have another Arkells that goes and does other things when the original Arkells are busy it's like Blippy yeah. as well how there's a fake Blippy and then also Mika it's a whole franchise right um, no I have zero problem with the no. Arkells they're, they're yeah, great the I, I met and interviewed them they're wonderful wonderful yeah. people no, it's just like, oh yeah for the the Grey Cup halftime show we had is it the Arkells <laughs> like you can just guess <laughs> yeah. I uh, 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 <laughs> nothing wrong with them nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with them with but them. we are going to make those shots for sure like yeah. and I'm sure they're they're laughing about it too and by the way all we're doing is laughing about them being successful yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm happy for that. LMAO, you do lots of shows. <laughs> hey, you're a band that a lot of people like? <laughs> what a bunch of losers. LMAO. Anyway, band. we hope that you have a fantastic uh fantastic first we'll be back Wednesday. Yes. Don't forget there's a CJ show. Don't forget there's an objective basketball pod. And when you're done listening to both of those, you go on Spotify, you listen to the Arkels. That's right. Whole everything. Leather jacket. That's the song you want to listen to if you want to get in the Arkels. Just saying. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Get in a sports book. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.